All right, so now that I've downloaded the Kinovia software uh, and I have a video of the motion that I want to test, I'm going to show you guys how to go through and annotate that video to pull out a piece of data. Now, if you have a long video that has multiple throws or multiple kicks or multiple whatever it is you're trying to record, that's fine. You're probably going to go through this one time for each of those things inside that video to process it. Also, if you haven't recorded any video yet, but you want to try and play around with the software first to see kind of what you can do um, before you invest too much time in, in figuring out what kind of activity you want to record and report on, that's fine too. But you do need to have something recorded to be able to follow along with this lecture. So make sure you go ahead and got something, some kind of video that you want to process um, to be able to follow along with this to learn how to use this software. The software is pretty straightforward. The first thing we need to do is find the uh, video we want to work on. So I'm actually going to go to uh, my folder where I have the planning for this beam camp and I'm going to go to my raw videos and I have a video here called long throw so I'm going to open that. The first thing it's going to do here is we're going to open up this set and we have uh, the video shown here. Now again I've talked about this before but you probably don't want to do anything to process this video before you bring it into the Kino Video software. Um, if you open it in video editing software and you modify it, you're kind of opening yourself up to the potential uh, to kind of ruin the encoding on the video or to change the frame rate or things like that, which is going to affect your data negatively. So I would suggest that whatever format your video goes into, as long as you can open it inside the Schema Video software, use that. If you're in a format that you can't, try to convert it without compressing it or using a minimal compression and making sure you keep the same frame rate. So that's one of the things. And again, you know, this is all just to kind of learn. So if it, it doesn't work out that well, then I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just do your best. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play back this video. And actually, since this is a little longer than I need to, since that's a little bit of an intro to it, I'm going to try and go and find my first throw here. You notice here I have your news controls where I can play, pause. I also have the ability to step forward a frame. I can step to the end or I can move this along the timeline. I can also make it speed up. I can make it play faster or I can make it play slower. And I don't have any sound on right now just because one, I don't want to have sound in this video and this software doesn't really, isn't really intended to do any kind of audio editing. So. I'm going to go ahead and try and skip to where I do my first throw. And then what you want to try and do is you want to figure out and set your working zone, which is defined by this kind of square open bracket and square end bracket. And it's going to automatically kind of scale the video into that zone. So once I've gotten pretty close here, I'm going to play this back. So that's like that's about the start of my throw. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit from there. I'm going to make that the start of my working zone, and I'm going to play it until after the end of the first throw. So it goes up, comes down, catches it. I'll pause it, and I'll make that the end of my working zone. So now we've got a smaller subsection of my video that I'm actually going to use to uh, process this. And now that I'm in there, you notice that my scale here on the bottom is now just staying inside that working zone. Um, and as you're working his own, the duration of it is less than 15 seconds. It should automatically default into kind of the, the control panel version of this too. Um, so that's kind of convenient inside this. Now what I want to do inside this working zone is I probably want to trim this down so that I actually have just the frames I, can, I am concerned about for my video. You notice it's a lot easier to step through this now that I'm in this working area. What I wanted to figure out with this uh, video was a couple of things. I wanted to know what was the maximum force that I produced on the ball to really do the, to throw it up, how high the ball goes, and I was interested to know what the impact of, of uh, air resistance or drag on the video, on the ball was. So really I need to probably get the at least the bottom of when I bend down to throw up the ball because then I gotta accelerate that ball vertically. Um, and then I also want to figure out how high it goes, the absolute maximum position in the vertical direction. Uh, and I probably also want to look at the velocity and the acceleration of the ball during its path. So if I want to trace this ball throughout the entire arc, I need to identify that ball and use a label to show that that, that is the ball at each point. Now if I play this out, again I wanted to set the start of that a little bit earlier, so I'm going to go back. I am going to trim my starting zone a little bit more. 
That looks like a good starting point. And I just want to play it until just so when I catch it. So there I've caught the ball, so I'll make that my end point. Again, the narrower you can make that start point and end point, the easier it's going to be to, to modify this. I'm going to go back to my starting point. I'm going to step back my video to right at the start. And then I'm actually going to zoom in on the area where I am to make it easier for me to put a marker on that ball. So I'm going to use my magnifier here. And then actually I like to do this by right clicking on this and then switch to direct zoom. And that makes this whole uh, frame bigger. Now to trace the ball, I'm actually going to right click on the ball. And I'm going to say track path. It's going to want to try and automatically track the path of the ball uh, using a vision algorithm. But you want to go through each frame and make sure that it's doing it correctly. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to try and just make sure that this is in the center of the ball. And if you want to zoom in more, you can too. So you see that one is actually quite a bit off. So I'm going to try and move that. Again, try and get it closer to the center of the ball. And I'll repeat this process for the entire throw. Now once I get actually let go of the ball and my fingers are no longer in the way, um, it should be a little bit easier for the software to automatically track that ball. Especially when it's up in the sky when there's a kind of an even background. You can tell I'm trying to throw this because I'm squatting down pretty far as I'm coming down. Well, I'm also curving the ball quite a bit, so that's probably not helping me. <laughs> and again, you probably will find that you don't need to move all of these uh, as it does a better job of tracking the position. And it's good to use the crosshairs as well as the edges of these boxes to kind of give you an idea of how well centered that is. I'm also trying to use the position of my fingers a little bit to give me an idea of where I'm putting it. So I'm consistent. If you can put it at the same position on the object each time, you know, that's as good as uh, any absolute position. So if there's a an edge that you know is going to be consistent, then you can use that as well. Um, but keep in mind that this ball is also going to rotate, and so if I try and use like the the labels or the kind of the colors on it, that might not be reliable because they may not stay in the middle. And I bet after this one we'll probably do a slightly better job of tracking this. Oh. If it does this thing where it basically thinks that you've stopped tracking it, um, that means that there's been a change in the video that it wasn't able to figure out which was the next frame. So what we want to do is we want to restart path edit it by right clicking on the path and then that'll let you come and get this and move it around. It looks like it's actually not tracking it as good as I had hoped it would. Depending on how long this video is, I may edit some of this out in post. Looks like it's finally doing a pretty good job of tracking that ball as it gets up in the air there. Now I've zoomed out too far, so I'm going to return my zoom to default. It's doing a pretty good job of tracking it there. I was like watching me turn as I'm following that ball. <laughs> You can see that I lost it again. So let's zoom in on that frame. Then 
we'll fix this guy here. That's probably good. So now I've got this pink zone represents the area that I've got that ball traced, and it's traced pretty well. So that's probably as good as I need to get to get the, the data for that ball. If you want to uh, name this trace, if you uh, go into the configuration here, so again, just the way I restarted the path edit, if you right click on the path, and then go into configuration, you can change how this is showing up. Um, and I'm going to just label this volleyball. So I've got my whole path here figured out. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I want to have a reference point, basically a zero position. It looks like my, my left direction is pretty straight up, so or at least straight enough up that I don't need to worry too much about that being um, in the wrong direction. But I do want to figure out kind of how high this ball goes. And if I'm going to do that, I have to have a zero point or a ground. Um, so I'm going to try and pick the point where I am on the ground directly beneath the ball. And I'm actually going to try and set that as my zero, right? This point between my two feet where I'm directly beneath the ball. And set that so I can use that to figure out what the total height of the ball was. So to set the zero point, basically the zero, zero in the pixel frame, I'm going to go into my options here for image. And then it says coordinate system origin. If you click on that, then I can actually pick where I want the origin of the uh, system to be. So I'm going to pick this spot right under between my feet here on the ground below the ball. And you see that actually says the pixels there. Then I can apply that. That origin will stay the same for the entire frame. So if I go back to the beginning, if I go into my image, coordinate system origin, there's that point relative to there. Uh, I also use the same system to calculate the transformation between pixels inside my image to distance inside um, my system. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that in a minute, though. So now I've got the data that I want here for the path of the ball uh, figured out. And I want to process this data in Excel. So to get this data into Excel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this into an Excel, uh, XML file using export to spreadsheet, and then Microsoft Excel. And I believe I have, yeah, so I have a folder here for these files for this camp. So I'm just going to call this beam long throw. I'm going to hit save. And then when I open that in Excel after I do some editing to it, I'm actually going to uh, save it as an Excel workbook. Um, but for some reason this, this software likes to export as a uh, template file. Alright, so I'm actually going to leave this program open for the next part of the video. Um, but that's it for this video. I want you guys to make sure you're able to do that, follow along with the video. And then once you're ready to start processing the data in Excel, we'll go through and we'll actually transform the pixel images or the pixel points into distance points. Uh, so leave this program open. If you're ready to go ahead and go into Excel, if you need to watch this again to go through and do your video, then feel free to do that. And we'll go through opening and editing the, the data and process and starting to process it next time.